Yes, I have blue pants. Deal with it. <laughs> So amps are, in my opinion, probably the most important part of your signal chain as a guitarist. Certainly everything is important, the guitar, the pedals, even the cable and stuff like that. But honestly, at the end of the day, what I want to invest the most money in is the amplifier tone-wise, just because that's where a lot of the tone is. Amps are one of my favorite things to actually mess around with just because there's so many different types of characters of amps. I mean, you can see here that I have a wide variety of amps and honestly, trading out new amps and getting new sounds is one of my favorite things to do. So today I'd like to talk about the Dr. Z Carmen Gia. <laughs> Unlike a lot of amps that I've acquired over the years, the Carmen Gia was not one that I pined after or that I fantasized about owning. I remember when I was younger, I had a poster of a Marshall Dual Super Elite half stack, and I've always pined over John Mayer's Two Rocks and stuff like that. But the Dr. Z Carmen Gia was never one of those amps that I was really infatuated with. I first played a Carmen Gia many years ago when I was in high school. Uh, I was at a guitar center with my dad and they happened to have a used Carmen Gia and a Z-Best cab. And we decided to plug into it because neither of us had actually played a Dr. Z. We'd just seen them in catalogs and magazines. So we plugged in and what we got was one of the cleanest, fullest sounds that we had ever heard. We were both floored. Unfortunately, the amp was about $1,200 for the head and the cab, which today is an absolute steal and even would have been at the time. But when you're in high school, $1,200 might as well be 10,000 and so had to pass on it. So over the years as I've gotten other amps, the Carmen Gia was always something that I kind of thought about but never really looked into until a year or two ago when one came up on Reverb for a price that I could not pass up, at least just to try to have one in the arsenal. <laughs> So fun fact and weird thing about my relationship with the Carmen Gia is I bought it and I liked it. It certainly sounded good and I played it for a gig or two, but I didn't do a deep dive into it and it wasn't one that I absolutely had to have. So not too long after I got the Carmen Gia, another amp actually came up for sale and I did what most guitarists do and I thought to myself, well, I'll just sell the Z I just got and I'll get this amp. And that's what I went to do. I bought the new amp and got it in and had the Z about ready to sell. But the new amp had a couple of problems. I wanted to retube it and then there were some weird things about the types of tubes it used. So I ended up having to shelve that and the Carmen Gia was what I used for a couple of shows. And after playing those shows, I realized something. The Carmen Gia had become my workhorse amp. I found that I was taking it out to gigs, recording sessions, practices, pretty much anything I had because it was the perfect wattage, it was a great tone, it was super portable, and all my other amps had some sort of caveat that made me just go, I'll just bring the Z. So after that, when it came time to actually sell the Z, I couldn't. It had become too wrapped up into what I was doing and I realized that this is my main amp. <laughs>
here's why the Carmen Ghia is my workhorse amp and typically the first amp I pick when I go to play a show or go to a recording session. First off, it's a really good loudness level. So there's a thing called Z watts that a lot of Z owners talk about. And that's the thing that Dr. Z amps are typically a good deal louder than what their wattage rating would indicate. For instance, the Carmen Ghia is an 18 watt amp. This, in my opinion, was louder than a Fender Vibrolux 35 watts going through a 210 combo. That's kind of crazy. I would actually put this on par with pretty much any 30 or 40 watt tube amp. And that's really nice because it falls in the spot to where I can turn it down and use pedals and still get a good tone out of it without, you know, driving the sound guy nuts. But it actually has carried me in a few shows to where the PA was either crappy or they didn't bring one in and I had to turn it up to get over the drummer and it did it with no problems. The second thing I love about this amp is its versatility. So I know what you're going to say, Tyler, that amp has two knobs. There's no way it's that versatile. And that's where I would say, believe it or not, it is. See, I mentioned it earlier, but the Carmen Ghia has a fullness to it. It just really fills out just about every frequency you would want. The lows are nice and robust, the mids are there and make it very present, and the treble is just very nice and sweet up top. There are certainly things that other amps do better than the Carmen Ghia, but the Carmen Ghia stands in for just about any kind of amp design that you would want. If you're looking for Fender Cleans, it'll get you in the ballpark. If you're looking for Box Chime, it'll get you in the ballpark. And if you're looking for Marshall Crunch, it'll get you in the ballpark. And I would actually argue that it does Marshall Crunch just about as well as most Marshalls. It's also somehow got a voice all its own. If you look up Dr. Z's videos, I actually believe the circuit is some sort of like ham and organ preamp for the reverb or something. So it actually isn't something that is copied a whole lot in the guitar industry, at least not to my knowledge. <laughs> Carmen Ghia is the portability of it and the build quality. So as you can probably see, I really like small amps. I used to have a Marshall half stack and it was a pain in the butt to move. Even the Fender Vibrolux I got rid of because it was just too big to take anywhere. This thing is like 20 something pounds. I can pick it up with one hand and we're good to go. The other thing I realized is how incredibly well built Dr. Z amps are. So I'd read on a lot of forums that really there wasn't anyone better in the industry as far as reliability and how robust their amps were built. Then I saw pictures of what's inside this thing, and I kind of have to agree. You don't see point-to-point -point hand wiring nowadays in a lot of amps, and if you do, you got to go up to insane prices to get it. And I will say, I don't know much about electronics, but when I look at the turret board on the Dr. Z, and I ask myself if one of those components go out, how easy is that going to be to replace? The answer is, well, pretty easy. When I look inside a lot of modern amps today and it looks like a computer PCB board, and you ask me how easy are one of those parts to replace, that sounds a little more complicated to me. And complicated generally means more expensive to replace. <laughs> Thank you. 
that's my two cents on the Carmen Ghia. It's become my workhorse amp, and it is the go-to one that I pick for most trio stuff. As a matter of fact, when the trio went into the studio to do our latest single, which was a cover of the Allman Brothers' One Way Out, this is what I brought, and this is what I recorded everything on, the leads, the rhythms, everything. Because again, it had that full sound, and I could hit it with any pedal that I wanted, and it just sounded fantastic. So honestly, for the price, the tone, the reliability, I just don't think you can beat the Dr. Z Carmen Ghia. So I'm happy that I finally got to add this thing to the arsenal, and I can say I think I'm going to be a patient of Dr. Z for a very long time. Cut that on camera.